everyone, it's Heather Moxie and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm finally showing you part three of my DIY bedroom furniture series and I'm gonna be showing you how to DIY this headboard to give your bedroom some rustic charm. Of course, it's super easy and very inexpensive considering actual bed frames. I don't know about you, but for me, a headboard kind of just ties everything together in a bedroom. Depending on the type of look that you're going for, the first thing you're going to need to do is buy different sizes of wood. Of course, everything that I use in this video will be listed in the description box, but since I was going for a more rustic vibe, I went with different sizes of 1x4s, 1x6s, and I think even 1x8. I actually drew inspiration from Pretty Handy Girl's blog. I will link her stuff down below. She actually used a similar method and put different size pieces of wood together. It actually helps age the headboard and make it look like it's been around forever. After you're happy with your arrangement, you can move on to creating your stencil for your headboard. You can do this any way that you like. You can even use this with a giant piece of cardboard. I happen to have a roll of drop paper laying around. You can find this at any hardware store. I highly recommend getting a roll of this stuff if you're a crafter or a DIYer. I use it so much and in so many different ways. But for this project, you're just going to use it to trace the shape of your headboard. I referred back to Pretty Handy Girl's blog to kind of get an idea of the shape that I wanted. But check out Pinterest, get ideas, get inspired, and draw a shape that you like. Don't worry, you only have to draw half of it. Once you're happy with the half that you've drawn, measure the halfway point or the size of your headboard. Just make sure that you cut out the width of your stencil to be the width of your headboard. Our bed is a queen size bed, so I believe it came out to just over 60 inches. If you do end up with a little bit of extra space on either side of your stencil, that's perfectly fine. We actually went with about an inch or so space on either side to keep our headboard from looking exactly the same size as our bed. After you've measured everything out, you're ready to fold your stencil so you can cut it. This is the reason why you only had to draw half of your stencil and it ensures that both sides are symmetrical to each other. Once you have it cut out, you can lay it flat on your surface and decide if you like that shape. I actually went back and cut down the center of my stencil just because I didn't like how far it was raising. And after you're done with any final trims, I recommend taping it to the wall and stepping back to decide if you like that shape, if you like the size, and if you need to do anything else to it. After you're satisfied with your stencil, you can now move on to tracing onto your wood. You're just going to lie it flat, tape it down, make sure it doesn't move, and begin tracing it with a pencil. After you have everything transferred over, do not forget to number your planks. This will make everything go so much smoother once you start cutting. Using a jigsaw, you can now basically trace those lines to cut each piece. And don't be like me, wear protective shoes and protective gear. It's really easy to get excited about your projects and just not care about any of those things, so definitely make sure you have the right gear. The jigsaw I'm using is part of a Black & Decker tool set. I will also link that down below. I absolutely love it. Once you're done cutting, you can now rearrange your planks based on their numbers so you can get back to your original shape and begin measuring out how tall it's going to be and what planks you need to cut off of the bottom. I know you. Send me. Darling, you. This step is completely optional, it just depends on the look that you're going for. I used a tape measure to trace a line across all of our planks except for the planks that would be our leg. And by doing this, we actually created a headboard end. For our headboard, we just kind of thought that this made it look more professional. You're not going to see the planks that we cut off, but we kind of wanted it to look that way. Even if you don't do that step, don't forget to measure how tall you want your headboard to be and then cut the legs accordingly. After everything's cut, you can attach 1x4s as braces. We actually used wood glue underneath these braces, and we ended up going back and adding a third brace in the middle. We also used self-tapping screws to drill along each brace, but of course, everything will be listed in the description box. After that wood glue has had time to set, you can begin staining or painting. I used my Minwax Early American stain so that it would match my DIY nightstand and my newly remade dresser. I'll also link those videos down below. I used about one layer for each plank and just wiped off any excess before it could dry. And once the stain was done, I used a layer of polyacrylic to seal everything up and give it a finished look. After your layer of polyacrylic, you are completely done with this project. Make sure you give it proper time to dry and air out, and then you can simply set it against your wall. I have a metal bed frame that supports my box spring and my mattress, so I only have to lean this headboard against the wall. With the headboard at a slight lean, you really can't tell that it's not attached to the bed. You can't tell that it's basically a faux wood bed frame, and it creates this really rustic and charming look that you would never guess is a DIY. I absolutely love how this project came out, and I'm so happy we finally have a headboard. I feel like our bedroom is finally complete 
complete. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at HeatherMoxieDIY if you'd like to see sneak peeks and looks at what I'll be working on or what I'm up to. And if you enjoyed this project, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can see whatever else I may be working on. And as always, I will see you guys next weekend with another video. Bye!